Today, we're going to talk about Agents MD, which is an open format for guiding your agents, your coding agents, regardless of the tool that you're using. So it's vendor agnostic. You can use it with Cursor, with Claude Code, with Windsurf, with Klein, whatever you're using, this will work in order to guide your agents. And in this video today, we're going to see how it can help you and what are some best practices for using Agents MD files to get the most out of them. If you like this video, let me know by hitting a like button and subscribing. But now let us get right into it. All right, so this is what we're talking about today, Agents MD, an open format for guiding your AI agents, regardless of the tool that you're using. It's vendor agnostic, you can use Cursor, you can use Windsurf, you can use Claude Code, whatever you want to, and you can provide instructions for your coding agents to use this context. Now, a lot of you guys will probably already know about this. So my goal with this video is twofold. On the one hand, I want to show those of you who don't know about Agents MD, what it is about. And on the other hand, I want to show those of you who know about it, how to properly use it, or at least how I use it and how I benefit from using it. Now, one thing about Agents MD, as I mentioned it already, is it's agnostic to the vendor. There's also other things that you can use, like Cursor Rules for Cursor. You can use Claude MD for Claude. You can use Gemini MD for the Google applications but agents MD is agnostic. So we can use it with basically every tool. And for this today, I have prepared a simple sample application, I call it sample project, we can take a look at it. It's a basic Django application, all we have to do is we have to say UV run, manage pi and then run server that already has a bunch of code in it, this should open up now a browser, we navigate to some of the tabs here like mathematics, for example, and I just have a bunch of mathematical functions, I can just calculate the nth Fibonacci number, I can export results that I have calculated as PDF, very simple stuff, just a mock application to play around with here. And if I now use my AI agent to implement a feature, it's going to do that the way it's always doing that. In other words, it's not going to consider my specific style preferences or the context that I have in my application. In order to consider context, it would have to always look through the files and see what we have, because I don't give it that information unless I always do that manually. For example, here I have mathematics and I have a utils py. Here I have a bunch of mathematical functions, very simple stuff. And you can see there's no type hints in here. And usually you want your agents MD file to align with the code that already exists, this would, this would make it even easier to use. But right now we're going to run an experiment. On the one hand, I'm going to try here now to implement a new function with AI. So I'm going to use sonnet 4.5. I'm going to instruct it to say, uh, or to implement a function, implement a function for calculating the nth Lucas number in and I'm going to pass here as context the utils py file. So this is without any agents MD file, I'm just telling it to do that. And what it's going to do is it's going to implement this function, just like every other function. Now, to be fair, if all of these functions already had type hints, probably it would also use type hints. But there's some more complex stuff that is not as simple as just defining the functions to look like the other functions in the same file. Oftentimes, for example, the program will struggle to do migrations when it comes to Django because it doesn't know that I'm using UV. Since I'm using UV, I need to do UV run and not just uh, migrate. So let me show you here. This is the function Lucas, there you go. Now I'm going to undo this, I'm going to open up a new chat. And what I can do now very, very simple and specific approach, I can go to the top directory here, I can say new file, and I can say agents.md. This is a simple markdown file, and I can give a simple instruction, like instructions, always, no matter what, use type hints, especially in utils py files. Now, the interesting thing is we're not passing that as context, we're not going to say here at agents MD, we're just going to pass the same prompt as before, uh, at least roughly what was it, please implement a function that calculates calculates the nth Lucas number, in and then I'm going to pass this file here. So I don't have the agents MD file loaded as context here. However, since it's called agents MD, it's going to be considered context and it's going to take into account that we need to add type hinting. So you can see already here, just by instructing the model in agents MD to use type hinting, it used type hinting, even though none of the other functions here do that. And I didn't specify this in the prompt. 
So oftentimes we will tell a model be more concise, uh, add some line breaks or add some blank lines in between major sections or use comments like this or name the functions like this. And by doing that, it works to some degree, because then over time, it forgets the context, the longer the conversation goes, but also have to do it every single time I start a new conversation with agents MD files, I can just define in a central place that I want certain things to happen. And I don't have to constantly pass the same context over and over again. But this, of course, is just one simple example here, we can make these files much more powerful. But before we go into details and best practices, I want to show you here how we can also work with agent MD files, because we don't just have to rely on a single one. For example, here we have the rule, we always want to use type hints, especially in utils py files. Now, what I can also do is I can say, second rule, always no matter what use camel case when defining functions, and then we can say especially in utils py files, just so that we have this very specific statement. So it's not overlooked. And now if I run this, of course, we're going to get the camel case function, we can actually try to do this again from scratch here. So continue and revert, it's going to use this new context now. And the cool thing is, however, we can combine multiple agents MD files, and we can also exclude certain directories, for example, from rules. So what I can do after I show you that this actually works, you can see camel case here is considered. Now it's going to write Lucas number in camel case, as you saw, and it's going to use type hinting. Perfect This is exactly what I specified. But also what I can do now is I can say in certain directories, I have more granular rules. So I can undo this. And I can say now in mathematics here in this application, I can create another agents.md file. And here I can say instructions. And I can say never ever use type hints in this application. Also not in utils py files. Besides that, um, apply the rules off and then I can say dot 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 agents MD. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying this is agents MD one. And then I have a more granular one in mathematics here, telling it to not use type hints, even though it's specified in this agents MD, I'm not saying anything about camel case here. And I'm saying, uh, besides that, always follow the rules in the original file. So I'm linking these two together, again, not passing anything as context here, I'm just going to rerun this. And hopefully, it's going to consider that camel case is needed, but type hints are not needed. So it already reasoned about this, it actually also targets here the root MD file and the mathematics MD file. So now you can see Lucas number without type hints. So this is camel case, no type hints. And this is how you can work with that. But this is a very minimalistic example. There is a link I want to show you here that is not the only source that we're going to use today. But it is a link telling us about the best practices of using agents MD files. And I'm not going to just read it to you. This is just a source here. I have the points that I want to mention. But basically, there are some rules that seem to work very well when using these agents MD files. So this is just a source, but I want to show you my own example, I'm going to go into agents MD, and I'm going to paste here, the one that I prepared for this video. This is not perfect. This is just a bunch of examples uh, thrown into a single file. And what we have here is the structure that can be quite useful. So we start here with agents MD as a heading. And then we say project overview here, we provide information about the layout of the project. First of all, we specify that this is and also we do this down here with the environment, we specify the exact versions, we say we're using Python 3.12 or above, we're using UV as a package manager. And we say all Python commands must see you uh, must use UV run. If we don't do that, it's always going to try to, um, to to do stuff like Django migrate or manage py migrate instead of UV run manage py migrate. So telling it we're using UV tells it now you have to actually do UV run before you run any commands. Uh, database SQLite three, we then also specify here, and this is an important thing, whenever you're using commands, you want to specify them early in the agents MD file. So here, we provide the instruction to use UV in order to run commands. And also, this is another best practice. So the first best practice is commands are early in the agents MD file. The second best practice here is to also provide examples. So we do that here by telling it correct is UV run manage pi run server, UV run manage pi uh, migrate, not just Python manage, manage py run server. This is not how it works. Uh, in addition to that, I also have an example down here, 
which is about coding style. It doesn't make a lot of sense to explain to the agent what exactly the coding style is composed of. So you don't tell it to leave empty lines and to uh, use camel case and you don't ex explain to it what camel case is. It knows that to some degree, it can help to maybe have one sentence summarizing this, but it doesn't make sense to have like a wall of text explaining to the agent how to write code. It makes much more sense to show bad example and corrected example. Now, obviously this style here is ridiculous. I'm just using it to show you that it's actually applied by the agent's uh, MD file existing. But our rules here are we're always using camel case, we're always using type hinting, and we're always leaving a blank line between every single statement in a function. So that is a very odd style, the agent would never code like this. But because we provide an example here, it's going to adhere to this coding style. And another thing that can help the agent a lot is to provide a structure of the project. Now you can also be more detailed than that you can provide some comments about what app is used for what. But just running a tree command and copy pasting it can help a lot. So if I open up a terminal, go to my tutorial directory here, go to sample project, and then I run a tree command. And then maybe I want to say, uh, just use two levels or something just copy pasting this can already give a lot of useful context to the agent because it knows okay, these are the applications that exist, this is what I have to work with. And here's how, how I can navigate this environment. So that's another best practice. So the bullet point list is we want to use commands early, we want to use examples over explanations for commands and also for code examples. So to specify styling of the code, you want to use examples of right and wrong instead of describing it, you want to be specific about your stack and the version numbers. And you want to also give a file tree or at least a project structure in some form. In addition to that, it makes sense to specify certain ground rules and also boundaries. So here I have coding conventions, what you should always do. And another rule that I like to include in my projects is to avoid using helper functions, because by default, almost every agent when I have a function that I want to implement, implements three functions that are kind of calling one another and I don't like the style. Sometimes it's useful. Oftentimes, it's just annoying. So I always like to include something like this. And besides that, boundaries. So these are some very, uh, yeah, small boundaries here, but never ever delete files with RM or similar commands, never use any git commands at all. So these boundaries will keep it in check. However, you need to not rely on these, it can still overlook this and run git commands or delete commands, especially if you ask it to push something or to commit something, it's just going to ignore the boundaries and follow your instructions. But this is at least something that you can try to add to make it more secure. So let's give it a try again. Let's get rid of this granular agents MD file. Let's just go and say, run all of this again. And let's see if it adheres to the coding style. And it talks about the agents MD file, which is good. So it's going to consider the styling options. And it's going to use the ridiculous style we defined in the file. So if I go now to utils py, we have Lucas and we have a blank line in between every single instruction here, which is following our style. So whatever your style is, it's expected to follow it. So that's basically what an agents MD file is for a couple of use cases that come to mind that I have used myself in the past uh, is as I mentioned, Docker setups, UV setups, but also when you're using certain uh, things like tailwind with Vite, then almost always the agent fails to properly install it because it just uses some npm command and it fails. So integrating tailwind into a Vite project that is react makes much more sense if you have an agents MD file to just specify what exactly you're using. I'm using Vite, I'm using react, I'm using this version of all that. And besides that, of course, all sorts of commands for testing or for contribution. I mean, there's also contribution MD if you want to define that. So this is the central place where you want to put the most important instructions that are going to be considered by your coding agents to not make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, in case you're interested on my website, you will find a tutoring and a services tab. There you can contact me if you need help with a project with a startup, if you need some guidance, if you need some one on one tutoring, you can contact me via email or LinkedIn, the links are at the bottom of the respective pages. And besides that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.